We continue our look at the U.S. economy with Marvin Goodfriend, professor of economics at Carnegie Mellon University. Professor Goodfriend is a former White House senior staff economist during the Reagan administration and the former director of research at the Richmond Federal Reserve. And he joins us from Pittsburgh. Professor, welcome back to Bottom Line. Always a pleasure to have you on. It's good to be here. Well, today's jobs number notwithstanding, we have had a string of poor economic numbers recently. In the first six months of the year, the economy expanded eight-tenths of a percent. That's the slowest pace since the recession officially ended. Consumers cut spending in June for the first time in 20 months, and the employment-to-population ratio is down once again. Where is this economy headed? Well, the word that comes to mind is stagnation. I don't think it's likely we're going to get a double dip recession unless we get another shock that pushes things down in a hurry, and that could come from perhaps Europe or elsewhere. Uh, but stagnation seems to me to be in the cards given um, the logjam in Washington and the fact that um, we're at zero interest and you know, there's no more fiscal policy juice that we can call on, uh, and there's very little the Fed can do at this point. Well, the labor force particip participation rate, that fell to 63.9, and that's a new cyclical low. It's the lowest level since May of 83. The overall jobs picture, is this a question of growth or is it a question of confidence? I think it's a question of both. Confidence is at a low ebb in, in part because of the situation we've, we're in now. I think in 2008 there was some confidence because people believed that government policy could get us out of this uh, great recession with a, a springing back of growth. The uh, past two years I think has ebbed the confidence and, and we've spent the obvious policy tools without much effect. Professor good so friend, growth is slow. Why aren't firms hiring? Are they still concerned about the sustainability of the recovery? Are they concerned about the possibility of another recession? There's no question that there's the demand out there is the demand growth is, is very sluggish. It's in fact in the last month the growth of consumer demand was essentially zero in real terms. And so there's no real reason to hire unless there's a, a market to sell your goods and services. And that's the main reason why job growth is slow. The demand growth is just not there. And people with the wherewithal to spend are probably sitting tight because they're also the people that might be in the crosshairs of higher future taxes in order to pay the debt we've we've accumulated in this country. Well, we see the markets today reversing yesterday's sharp sell-off. Are we officially in correction mode? And what's Wall Street's take on this recent string of jury economic news that we have had since Congress and the White House reached that debt deal last weekend? Well, the, the, uh, the, uh, the focus of the world's attention on Washington over the last few weeks, I think, has also caused the world to focus on, on, on the, the potential for further stagnation in the economy. And I think... Uh, People began to think about this, and given the developments in Europe and the fact that really not much was accomplished in the debt negotiations after all, we're, we're gonna, there's going to be a lot more to go through as soon as November, uh, people just decided to unload stocks and, uh, and, and head for some safety because uh, most everybody understands who've been watching this that we're in for some rough times ahead. Yeah, and speaking of safety, institutional investors, they're seeking the safety of treasuries, but they're also putting billions in cash into commercial banks. Is this solely because of the protection those accounts get from the FDIC? Absolutely. This is an incredible um, development because um, institutional investors invest uh, uh, companies, treasurers at, at large corporations are reluctant even to leave their funds in money market instruments for fear that the money markets might um, seize up somewhat like they did back in 2008. And money market funds are not guaranteed formally by the U.S. Uh, government. So institutional investors with a lot of cash on hand have been moving those funds into banks where they can get full deposit insurance by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. So that's the extent to which we've moved into a more nervous stagnation than even we were in a couple of months ago. Professor Goodfriend, in our final minute, you mentioned overseas a moment ago the Eurozone. The European Central Bank sought to calm the markets by purchasing bonds of smaller countries, but the ECB didn't buy securities from Italy and Spain. What message does that send? Well, the ECB has been cornered in a sense that it's the only Euro area wide institution with the flexibility, the discretion to, to, to create cash and, 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 and uh, backstop the debt of a, very, a variety of European countries. But the European Central Bank is reluctant to do the work of what ought to be done by the duly constituted fiscal authorities of the European Union countries, uh, which ought to get the uh, permission from their own taxpayers to do this. 
The European Central Bank is, of course, an independent central bank and cannot speak for taxpayers. And so Trichet, who's the president of the European Central Bank and other members of the governing board, are telling Europe, they're telling taxpayers in Europe, they're telling um, other fiscal authorities in Europe, you need to step in, if you wish, to backstop the, the bonds of the larger countries of, of Europe. It's too much for the European Central Bank to do. It's a bridge too far. So there's a kind of a tug of war here, or a pushback by the European Central Bank telling fiscal authorities, do your job. We can only go so far. Marvin Goodfriend, professor of economics at Carnegie Mellon University, joining us from Pittsburgh. Professor Goodfriend, it's always a pleasure. Thanks so much for your input. We appreciate it. Thank you.